in today's video we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern taking a look here at some tropical concerns across the caribbean gulf of mexico and even off the southeast coast that we've been tracking for a few days now we're going to be taking a look at multiple cold fronts coming through the central and eastern united states bringing some showery weather and some cooler weather with them so some storminess is on the way which i cannot really say for the past few months also, a few major low pressure systems are going to be developing across the central and eastern states, and that is also something that it's been a long time since we could say. So, some exciting stuff today. Let's dive into it. We're taking a look at the European Ensemble Model Spaghetti Plot, first things first, and we do see that this low originates here nearby Central America. A lot of these wanting to curve it here, kind of through the sweet spot is what I call it, between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula there. We also have a few of these kind of heading northward towards Florida or the Bahamas and even multiple heading out to sea. So there is still numerous options on the table for what this storm could do. And really, it's been pushed back a few days. This, this was originally supposed to be developing quite soon. Again, multiple days it's been pushed back now. So we're seeing maybe some signs that this one's dwindling in odds. But really, the, the models continue to be quite bullish on it. So this is day five here on the uh, European model. So this is going to be November 1st, or the GFS model, better yet. This is the GFS ensemble model. We see that low is starting to form there over nearby Central America. By day six, we do see it begin to move northward, especially if it takes a more eastern track. We do see a lot of these heading towards perhaps Haiti or uh, Dominican Republic. We do have some... Low pressure concerns to the north as well as a completely separate system. So two different systems to track. Here's day seven. And look at this. We get this one moving perhaps into the Bahamas. A couple of these heading towards Cuba. And a few heading more northward. Which, by the way, this eastern one would be the best news. Because it would have the least chance of impacting really the United States or any land for that matter. Whereas this track would be a lot more impactful. We do see that a lot of these models for a more southern system are beginning to get a lot more intense. And slowly but surely move northward here. Here is day 7. And again with storm number 1 we do have some of these heading maybe towards the southeast or perhaps Florida. But the majority here are out to sea thankfully. Uh, so we will continue to track this but there is some good news there. Uh, the majority of these lows are heading towards Jamaica and then towards Cuba, which for a few days has been the consensus. So it's good to see these models kind of standing strong with their original track of expectation. Uh, always good to see that consistency here. Uh, we see by day seven here, or actually this is day 10. I, don't, I think my days have been off a little bit. So here's day 10. This will be November 6th. And we see that, again, we have this pretty large grouping heading towards Jamaica, maybe uh closer to the sweet spot here that they kind of slide along that southern edge of cuba there's a couple that want to head towards eastern cuba or perhaps into haiti uh, but that is definitely not the majority at this point we do have a handful also heading much closer to south Am or central america this would be uh, also probably the best case scenario for most folks as typically storms that stick very close to these land masses here uh, don't develop quite as much and they usually don't end up doing much of anything uh, this would be the absolute worst case heading into this area here let's head towards day 11 and sure enough we see that most of these are staying weaker here along that kind of central america area and a lot of these that are heading into this area are well into the 980s 970s so we have stronger systems likely hurricanes if it moves into that sweet spot heading towards the gulf of mexico Again, we do have a couple heading over Cuba and one heading towards Florida here. Southern Florida, that would also be a pretty strong solution. So anything in this department would probably be the worst case. This is an important time to also mention that Cuba is quite flat, especially when you're comparing it to these areas in Central America or perhaps Haiti and Dominican Republic where those islands and you know land masses here are quite mountainous. Cuba is relatively flat. I've been on cruise ships uh, nearby Cuba and you can hardly see it it's like uh, it's like the east coast you know it's just very flat but when you're near Haiti Dominican Republic you see those mountains and even some of these smaller islands are the same way like Puerto Rico as well uh, and some of these eastern Caribbean areas very mountainous compared to Cuba so is Central America so interesting kind of uh, fact there let's move towards day uh, this will be 12 
and we see that a lot of these are breaking through now so we see some heading towards western florida some of these heading towards more of the central gulf uh, some of these over the south have made it through just a handful and we do have quite a few heading towards the bahamas here so there's a lot of different solutions at play here uh, but regardless many of which are very very strong so if this does kind of make it out of this bubble here the area of where it originates and it does move northward out of there many of these are very strong storms so i think that that is uh, boating in the direction of a stronger system especially again if it breaks through so that's going to be a big big uh, kind of milestone in this storm's progression uh, the overall flow would be that even if it heads into the central gulf it should curve back eastward here Something like this seems to be the general flow that we're seeing on a lot of these models. Something like this. But overall, almost all of these do take this kind of eastern curve, as you can see. Um, we do have one more day here, and this is for, uh, I don't even know what day. This is November 10th, so many days from now. Uh, and again, this eastern curve is basically going to make Florida, especially the west coast, unfortunately, they've been hammered this year, kind of the hot spot if this storm... Uh, makes it to the Gulf. So if it heads anywhere in there, Western Florida will be kind of the hot spot. If it heads towards Cuba, more it could hit the Keys, Southern Florida as well, kind of nick that area there. I also see that as a possible solution. So these kind of tracks seem to be the strong ones that we're seeing a lot of these uh, members kind of show. We do have some out to sea solutions where the Bahamas would get the worst of it, perhaps Cuba as well. So those areas would be areas to watch. But regardless, kind of a little bit of a concerning look. Let's take a look at the overall upcoming pattern. And I'm just going to move us straight towards tomorrow afternoon. And this is for Monday on October 28th, the afternoon hour. We do have some rainfall and some snowfall happening out west. We do have a 997 over Wyoming. Again, Cascades here. Uh, Sierra Nevada. Rockies here. All of these mountain ranges experiencing some snowfall. So... Uh, definitely a little bit more stormy out there. Warmer across the central states especially, but there is some warmer air trying to move into the east as well. Meanwhile, we have cold air dipping in with this storminess for the west. Tuesday here on October 29th, this is what the look is. We have a stronger low now developing over eastern Colorado. Heavy snowfall for these Rockies of Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming. So a more major snow system is developing by this point. This is one of our first major storms on this model run. Still, again, very, very warm flow here across a lot of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes area. Uh, meanwhile, colder air for the West. By the time we reach Wednesday on the 30th, we see that this low wants to kind of dip to the Southeast over more central Oklahoma area. Some storminess is prevailing to the North might want to form into a warm front there. We see storms kind of drawing in. Uh, underneath that and then maybe a little bit of a cold front trying to develop underneath things uh, but it, we're really pretty stationary by this point uh, but by the time i reach thursday look at that this is a perfect frame to look at a lot of this energy transfers to the north we see this happen a lot in the winter so kind of a sign of the times but we see this energy transfer to the north where we kind of have more of a great lakes low again quite weak but still a low nevertheless and just because it's a weak low doesn't mean it doesn't bring uh, pretty persistent impacts. We're seeing stronger cold front and warm front activity along this one. Cooler air moving in, obviously, as most cold fronts do bring, obviously. However, major storms, it looks like, happening along this line, both in the forms of heavier showers, more persistent rainfall, and even thunderstorm activity, especially down there in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. Wouldn't be surprised if this is bringing about some pretty serious thunderstorm activity. Uh, there is very warm air surging to the north just to the east of that low. So something like this is what we're seeing. And that cold front swinging in and hitting that from the side can encourage tornadic activity. Definitely interesting. Definitely something I'm going to be watching. Uh, that is kind of alarming to me. So that's what jumps off the screen here. And I just want you guys to be a little bit aware. But some much needed rainfall starting for the central states. Some of this will be on the move eastward. Uh, so good news for all these very dry areas. The Northwest is experiencing once again, another storm. So again, rainfall in the lower elevations and coastal areas, snowfall happening across more of those higher elevation pockets. By the time we reach Thursday, the 31st, this is the look. We have that low moving on shore to the West, still snowfall in the mountains, rainfall, in, uh, pretty much elsewhere. Again, 
weaker low here but a sweeping cold front warm front out ahead and we're getting this precipitation further and further eastward here friday it does reach the east coast we can see that it has dwindled down a little bit so a little bit less persistent with that rainfall but it is still moving in and this could be some folks first precipitation in weeks i know if i got some here in virginia this would be the first in like a month so many areas are going to be getting some much needed precipitation even if it's not bringing you back up to average per se i think anything is better than nothing obviously so uh, we definitely can't let perfect be the enemy of good uh, we have to just kind of take the good as it comes as we take a look here at saturday on the second this is when things get interesting we want to see some more activity kind of sparking up across the plains we could start to get a low developing here the overall jet stream flow is a major trough along the west ridge peaking kind of over the central states once again and then flattening out over the east so higher pressure over here a little bit drier although some showers are able to persist but higher pressure in the east low across the central this should all be coming eastward once again, but we see this cold kind of dipping down out west, bringing some snowfall to the Rockies, nothing major, but still some areas of snowfall there. And we're watching this central United States storm. Let's see what happens. This is uh, Sunday the 3rd. Here is Monday the 4th. It's a very quick mover, but a lot of this activity begins to move northward. We see 1,004 once again over the Great Lakes right there. Another thing is a cold front underneath and a little bit of a warm front look, although it's a little bit south of that low. I mean, this is the flow that I'm seeing. Again, warm air would surge to the southeast of that low, just like this. And we would begin to see the cold wanting to dip in behind it once again. So this will present itself again as heavier showers, perhaps thunderstorms, even severe weather can't be ruled out, and more much needed rainfall in these areas once again. By Tuesday, we see that does move eastward. It does develop into a very strong low, actually. 980 there over the northeast. Heavy, heavy rainfall and even heavy snowfall up here for portions of Canada. And we still get kind of some precipitation in here. It's interesting. This kind of looks like monsoon activity in there with the, those heavier showers. A little late in the season, but precipitation to the four corner states nevertheless. And even some of this extending into the, uh, the southern and central plains. So good news for a lot of areas that need that rainfall. And at the end of the model run here, this will be Wednesday, November 6th, we once again appear to be having a low develop over the plains with heavy precipitation out ahead of it. And again, this would likely head eastward, so more precipitation on the way. We could be turning the page here with the activity returning to the central and eastern states if this trend continues, which I know I'm excited about, and many of you should be as drought conditions have really begun to take over for the east. This could undo all of that, really. Warmer air is pushing up the West Coast by this November 6th time frame. Cooler air uh, dipping down over the Rockies, bringing even some snowfall here behind this low. And it looks like it wants to develop a warm front, cold front look. We could begin to move all this cold eastward with that precipitation once again. Good news overall. Total precipitation, we do see a lot here for the central and to the northeast states, especially even some of the Gulf states here. Still the southeast, a little bit dry, but again, we're getting some, which is more than we could say before. So good news overall, and that could be increasing over time. Uh, and then the Pacific Northwest, we're seeing more as well. So let's look at the averages, and again, above average across much of the central states, even into the northeast, and then the northwest as well. This is overall a huge improvement from what we were seeing uh, a couple weeks ago. Total snowfall looking gargantuan for Cascades. Sierra Nevada, Rockies here, we're looking at a dusting, if anything, in the grays, two to six inches in the blues, purples, six to 10, pinks, 10 to 20, really, really good. And uh, even more than that, in those pastel blues and pinks, we're looking at feet of snowfall. So these ski res resorts are probably rejoicing right now as the snowfall is uh, occurring in a very, very big way. The temperature pattern here, we get cooler air around right now. This big warm-up does move in, but look at this. We get this swinging cold front. It does bring some cooler temperatures for a time here, especially around Halloween. Uh, the day after, on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, we get another warm-up, but it does look like, again, a cold front is going to begin to move this eastward once again. Uh, as we look at the GFS model, again, cooler air, warmer air, cooler air, warmer air, cooler air, warmer air. It's a roller coaster. Uh, probably more warmer than cooler across the central and eastern states with more cooler in the west, but everybody gets their fair share of both. It's a big flip-flop pattern, and we're transitioning into the winter, so you oftentimes do see this kind of very roller coaster type pattern, so I'm not too surprised by this. We should see big changes over the coming weeks. Anyway, 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.